Excellent. So uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to this short, but hopefully really useful for InFed funding workshop at the Street Games 2021 conference. Um, if you have joined us at any of our previous conference sessions, then welcome back. Um, and if not, it's fantastic to have you along for the first time over this couple of weeks. My name is Kevin Roberts, and I'm the Wales Partnership Fundraising Manager at Street Games. And one of our awesome young advisors, Harriet, is with us today as well, looking after the technical side of things, which means we can blame her if anything goes wrong. And to start with, can I just ask you to make sure you're on mute for now? Uh, that'd be awesome. Um, you will have the chance to contribute later uh, if you wish to do so. Uh, following the presentation, as I said, there will be an opportunity for a Q&A session. Um, as we're going through uh, the session, please feel free to add any questions or comments you've got in the chat box, um, and we will come back to them at the end. Uh, for now, I'm delighted to be joined by Stuart Gosfork, who is the Chief Executive Officer of the Wembley National Stadium Trust. And I will leave it to him to introduce himself and the trust properly. So, Stuart, it is all yours. Okay, hi. Uh, thanks, Kevin. So, I put, I, I, I was thinking when I was running through this just now, um, I'm not quite sure why I put this slide in to start with, especially after last night, which Kevin and I have already um, chewed the bones over, um, just in case you didn't remember what Wembley Stadium looked like. Um, and so we are the independent charitable grant making foundation that's connected to the stadium. Um, we go back about 10 years now to the building, the rebuilding of the stadium back in the early 2000s, in which there was a large contribution of lottery money through Sport England and the setting up of the trust. We get 1% of the stadium's annual taking things to distribute to charity and it's basically paying back that money that was taken out of Sport England's lottery money many years ago to help pay for the new stadium. That 1% of the stadium's takings, it's equivalent to about a million pound a year. So we're not we're not big in the grant making world, but our our USP is that we we come with that Wembley Stadium name attached to us. So everybody in the sports world wants a bit of us. Um, and what always amazes me, obviously, I fully appreciate the buy-in from the football community to what we do, but I get just as much interest from netball, hockey, cricket, and so on and so on. Sports, I have absolutely no link to Wembley at all. We fund community sports activities locally in the London Borough of Brent, which is Wembley's home borough up in the northwest of London. And then we have thematic programmes around England and across, I put it in England and countrywide. There's the first mistake of the day. That should have said in London and countrywide. Um, and we're a very small team centrally at the Trust. So we're always looking to maximise our impact by working outside of just our team, working with partners. So we work with NGBs, we work with the EFL Trust, with the FA and with other intermediaries such as street games. So we've funded street games several times in Brent for your local work there. So, you know, part of what we do with street games is just that good old fashioned, give them the money. Um, but we have a long standing relationship with street games, which, you know, which is, I suppose, what got me doing this session today, but we, we exchange information, we do visits, speaking at conferences and so on and so on. So it's that relationship is much more than just signing the checks. There, you know, the, there is a, a, a real relationship between the two organisations. And I, I was asked just, you know, why, why street games? Why, you know, why, why do we work with organisations like yours? You know, and we're, we're always, you know, it's, it's a very difficult job, actually. You know, people always think giving out money is, is easy, actually. Giving, giving it out is easy. Giving it out well is the real trick. And so anything we can do to add to the product that we're funding. So one of the questions we'll always ask, you know, any organisation that we fund is, where do they get their support from? Where do they, where do they gather their knowledge, their expertise, their impact? And I've just listed there you know, a number of the different sorts of organisations that we work with, that's NGBs, whether it's county sports partnerships, umbrella bodies, development agencies, local CBS, whoever it may be. But just to show us that any organisation we fund is not just acting on, you know, on its own, that there, there is a network that they're, they're, being, they're part of. 
And so working in partnership is it's always the, the, the key element. Um, you know, the, the best organizations we find at ground level are the ones that are you know, really tightly networked in to their local community. And we, we see this time and again, particularly with street games connected organizations that are just being part of street games gives an organization access to that much wider network and and you then start to see it becomes like a spider's web where this organization provides volunteers for that organization who provides some other support or members of the board of organizations and, and round and round it goes and that show yeah you know, we, we find that, that when you you come to visit or monitor the grants those are the ones that actually have the greatest impact on the ground they're the ones where you you really see more than just the the delivery of the session on the grounds on that tuesday morning whatever it may be you know that th those really are the best from our point our point of view and particularly on on fit and fed um our remit is as a community sports funder and people always say to us well yeah you, you you fund sport don't you yes we do that's that's what we fund we fund getting people out on the pitch, out on the track, out on the court. That's that's where our money goes. But we we know and we understand absolutely that sports delivery, and, and you'll understand you'll all understand this completely, that the sports delivery is so much more than just the game itself. I mean, what one of our big projects recently around London has been working with three of the national sports governing bodies getting primary school age girls playing team sports and everything that they learn from team sports around strategy around communication around personal development all of that stuff that you don't get from just an individual sport so we, we know there's so much more involved in in sport than just the playing of it we fund sport for all different age groups no matter how you cut it up so whether it's older people's sport women and girls whether it's geographical whether it's a particular sport and age, whatever it is but also the way that sport is used by different organizations in engagement in rehabilitation so we funded homelessness organizations doing sports um, organizations for domestic survivors of domestic violence where they're using sport to encourage women to rebuild a social life we funded projects working with offenders and those in or on the margins of the justice system and using sport as a as a framework for how they can develop the life skills they need to avoid getting caught up in in that way of life we've funded uh, you know, refugee organizations engaging you know, talking to a group of refugees what do you what, what what services can we put on we want to play football you know it's it's the most common response and that yeah and that's the way of engaging with those people again building a social life for them build, building the skills that they need so holiday hunger in that sense is no different in that it's a it's a cohort of people in this case young people in a particular situation and sports and physical activity is part of the way that the organizations and yourselves are engaging those people in whether it's diversionary whether it's skill building whatever it may be so what we are interested in in everything we fund you know some projects will just be we want to run a badminton session we want to run a basketball session absolutely fine but a lot of what we fund there will be much more to it than just that delivery of the sports session itself so i was also asked just to touch you know, I, i've been doing this this job of in in the, the charitable funding world for uh, two and a half decades now much longer than I, I, I there are those that said i had hair when i started this job but um <laughs> The, the, the main thing I always tell people when they're thinking about funding is to think about your project in cut it up in as many different ways as you can. 
you know, it's don't just think of it, it's a fit and fed project or it's don't just think of the activity. Think about the who, the what, the where. So what's the age group that you're working with? That may attract some funders. What's the geography? Is it an estate? Is it a town or city? Is it a county? Is it a part? You know, is it England? Is it Scotland? You know, each of these different active these different aspects will attract different funders. So okay, you know, what is the what's the activity? Is it is it the sport bit? Is it the food bit? Is it the art bit? Cut it up as many different ways as you can. Are you looking for revenue funding or capital funding? How much are you looking for? Who are your partners? So, uh, and who are your, who's your, your constituency? You know, is it single parents? Is it, are you looking at poverty relief? Are you looking at wellbeing? Or oh, each of these different aspects will attract different funders. So don't just think of your project as, oh, it's a fit and fed project, because that will inevitably, you know, fit and fed will not be in the, the criteria of very many funders. So you've got to be as creative as you can about thinking of all the different aspects of your work. And you'll suddenly find, oh, that, yeah, it's a young people's project, or it's, it works with the children of single parents. Though, yeah, and that's what will attract the interest of different funders. And of course, you know, Fit, fit and Fed now is, is not new. I mean, we're, at Wembley National Stadium Trust, we've been funding it in Brent for several years now. Yeah, so what's the, and you may be, as, as individual projects, you may have been running fit and fed projects for a number of years. So yeah, what, what's your learning? Show, the, show your experience in what, what you're doing. And yeah, show that you're, you're a learning organisation, that you know, this is what we did last year, this is what we've learned, this is, you know, and we want to do things slightly differently this year or that didn't work like, you know, funders are perfectly happy to accept, you know, that things don't work sometimes, you know, and don't, and don't be shy about, you know, accepting your failings almost, you know, you know, we tried, you know, we tried that, it didn't work, so this year we're going to do, we're going to do it differently, we're going to deliver it in a different location, we're going to uh, advertise differently, we're going to change our food supplier, wh whatever it may be. Um, you are also, I, I put Marcus Rashford down here, you, you are really lucky in that the whole holiday hunger issue has gone way up the agenda and is, and is now on you know, the radar of so many more people than it was this time last year, shall we say. And you may find with some funders that that is a positive. You may they find with some that you know they may think you're jumping on the bandwagon so show that you know, show where you've come from show your experience why you are the right people to to be delivering this session and you know we, we know from the, the the projects that we've been funding that you know the, the fit and fed project you know, it is a it is a complex project to deliver you've got many different aspects in terms of the fit and the fed what are the you know how do they come together? Explain that whole concept to the funder, just in you know, just in case. You may also find the this this role with with street games as as your your you know, the, the mentor uh, the mentor organisation the the provider of the 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 model and the way of working. Yeah, you know, may, maybe that needs explaining to some funders you know are we funding you or are we funding street games you know be clear about what what the different roles are um and also you know be be very clear about what you expect your project to deliver don't you know they are brilliant projects and you know and but you know, be honest and be open and be, be realistic. We're, we're not going to change the world in this. We're just our project, but we are part of a much bigger movement across the whole country delivering this. And that is going to actually, you know, that's seriously going to move the goalposts in the way that young people can access education when they go back to school after a, a holiday or whatever it may be. You know, re, you know, build, build up that 
that you know, we're part of something bigger but this this is what we do and this is where we can really make an impact in our local area so just a, a few final um sort of good practice tips for me and th these are sort of you know sort of build up of, of, of many years experience that i suppose the the main issue your your project is obviously very time specific you need to deliver it at a particular time of year you need lead up time for that and make sure you build that in because a lot of funders you know we're we're one example you know in in normal times should we say outside of pandemic times you know, we will only actually be distributing funds twice a year so yeah you you'll need to make sure you really are looking forward and thinking right what funding do i need where can i get it from you know and and don't don't think you know a month from delivery that you're actually going to be able to approach a funder and they're just going to sign a check for it if you are an, uh, approaching a local funder yeah they always remember and this might seem rather odd to, to actually say but yeah they will know their patch they are in, you know, they are experienced in their local area as well i mean you know, i've been grant making in london for say 25 odd years now and if if i had a pound for every time an organization has spent half of the space they have available to them telling me how deprived hackney is or how deprived tower hamlets is then yeah you know, I, I i wouldn't still be working um so tell the tell your funder what they need to know but you don't have to go into that really you know if, if they are a local funder you don't have to go into that very detailed level you know and, and provide pages and pages and pages of stats on you know they will know that but just build on it and again you know it, these tips may seem you know sort of you know, very very obvious but if a funder asks you to do something then do it you know they, they will always ask for things for a reason if you're asked to send in accounts budget constitution whatever it may be then actually make sure you send it i mean i, I know certain funders that take the attitude well we get enough applications from people that do send us everything so the ones that don't well i'm afraid they just go straight in the bin so you've spent hours and hours and hours writing things and just because you didn't attach something you've completely lost your chance so just make sure you know, however bizarre or banal you might think the request is if that's what the funder wants then do it because if you don't you've lost your chance and your really good project just won't get funded it probably won't even get through the front door equally you'd be amazed how many people who get funding from me don't even bother to say thank you you know and if, if you're going to go back again for funding next year you know the, the impression you make this year does actually count for something um you know I, the numbers of organizations i get this is if, if you get the funding you get a sheet of paper that you have to sign and send back when you want to draw the money down and you know it doesn't take a lot just to put a cover note in just to say thank you or, or email the, the your contact at the funder when you when you get the when you get the letter um it seems perfectly obvious to me but clearly not obvious to many and if you do if you are fortunate and you do get the grant you know just it, it's it's all part of that process just be clear about you what what monitoring are you going to be required to do you know are do the do, does the funder like to come out and visit do they just you know do they just give you the money you know, just be clear about what the whole circumstances of that grant award are get to know you know get to know the funder get under their skin because that's the way you'll find the relationship develops much better and you know it really you know the application review it really is it's your chance to sell your project nobody else can do it for you you know it better than anybody else you know it inside out you're the ones that are you know really enthusiastic about what you do and just make it i put just make it impossible for the funder to say no because make it clear you've done your homework make it clear you've you've read their guidelines you're making it easy for them to give you the money now if i if i was doing this session in a 
in a room with everybody in the room. I usually play a game where I get people, get everybody to, to talk to someone they don't know and find out about what they do and to get enthused about what that person does. And then you drop the bombshell that actually you're all fighting for the same limited pot of money. And suddenly where you were suddenly friends with people, you're suddenly not quite so friendly with people because maybe they'll get the money and you won't. It is a yeah. It is a competitive process. That 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 is un, undeniable. Every grants round that I've ever run has always been oversubscribed. We always have to say no, and it's not easy saying no sometimes. So just make sure it's it is not you that are the ones that we have to say no to. So that's all I'm going to say. I think that is kevin who introduced the session that's kevin's email address if you've got any questions after the session but we'll we'll go into a q a session now fantastic thank you very much for that Stuart. um hopefully you found it um really useful to hear from a, a funder's perspective and, and what they're looking out for what they like and what they don't like um i'm i'm conscious of the time and conscious of people's diary so um, if you want to come off mute, um, if you've got any questions, then then fire away or put them in the chat um, or likewise use my email address, which I'll put in the chat now if you want to follow up with anything afterwards. Um, so if anyone wants to come off mute or put in the chat, the floor is now yours. There we go. So Stuart, I've just got one question um, for you, if I may. Um, what would you say um, is your number one top tip, uh, golden rule, golden piece of advice for, for writing funding applications? Um, a colleague and I have got a, a mantra on this, which is, and I shall, I shall clean it up, which is um, read the guidelines. Oh, yeah, it is inevitable that every funder will have different guidelines, will have different instructions, different ways. You know, it, it's just, there is much more uniformity now than there used to be in the sector, but, you know, if it's a local authority, if it's a, 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 a charitable funder, there, there will be different requests, there will be different requirements. Um, so just, unfortunately, there, there is no easy way around it. Just read, read the guidelines carefully and carefully and carefully of each funder and do what they ask. It may, it may seem bleed and obvious to say it, but that is the, that really is the, you know, the, the gold, the golden rule, and that, and that's, as as, as I said, you know, with, with with some funders, if some funders, if, if you don't do what they ask, they will give you one chance to get it right. Some your your application, your case may be the best they have, but if you if you haven't presented it in the way that they ask, you haven't sent them something they want, you're stuffed. Yeah, completely agree. And in, in my time reviewing applications um, with, with street games and, and elsewhere, it's, it's astonishing. You know, it sounds obvious, but it's astonishing how many people and how many applications you get that they just haven't read the guidelines or they just copied and pasted from somewhere else. Um, and you can tell straight away that they've not really put as much effort in as they could have. Um, so, yeah, it, it may sound obvious, as Stuart says, but you'd be amazed at how many people just don't read the guidelines. Um, thank you for that. Um, it is now past 11.30, we are running slightly over, um, so if there are any other questions, uh, fire them in now. Um, and if not, um, then thank you very much for joining us. Um, we have got uh, more sessions throughout the week, um, you, you should get the link to them when you signed up. Um, so we've got a few more left this week, if you are coming to them, you're very welcome. Um, and if you're not, I hope you have a good rest of the week, and thank you very much. <laughs>